Okay, so transitioning into marriage was, I thought was going to be easy um, because I thought I was equipped and ready and we were friends as mm -hmm. well. I was, I'm really big on friendships. Yeah. Even after things have fizzled, let's still be friends. Okay. Um, but when situations came up that I couldn't, I couldn't process, I couldn't handle, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't navigate. I was like, okay, this is a whole different ball game. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not prepared to handle this. So let me ask you this. Do you believe that your upbringing influenced oh. your decision to marry this particular person? Absolutely. Tell because I, I only dated people in the church world, mm -hmm. or the church arena, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, because it was the unequally yoked thing first. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, if he ain't saved, don't even give him the time of day. Don't even look at him. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's why I didn't date people that was that I traveled with or in plays because mm -hmm. I already knew that. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, you got a girlfriend in every city. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he was a preacher. So mm -hmm. it was like in the church, preacher. Oh, it's a, I got this. Mm -hmm. All I have to do to be a good wife is, you know, pray and cook his meals. Hey friend, I'm Robin May and a few of the professional hats that I wear includes being a transformational speaker, a life coach, and a licensed therapist. And personally, well, I'm a wife, a mommy to three girls, and a pastor's wife, just to name a few. Girl, I'm over here doing all the things while trying to stay in shape and keep my skin clear. But the truth is, I don't want to be known for being busy. I think that's a scheme that somebody set up. No, I want to be known for living a life that is in perfect alignment with what God intended. And I want to help you do the same. So it's with that in mind, I'd like to welcome you right here to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Over here, we're creating a safe space to have real conversations with real women on real topics. This is a judgment-free zone where we can be vulnerable and honest and curious about our lives so that we can elevate not just what we do, but who we are. So if any of that resonates with you, again, welcome to our safe space. This is Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this episode of Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. And as you can see, I have one of my girls here, Latrice Pace. Yes. I'm about to introduce her, but before I do, you know all the things. If this is your first time here, welcome. I don't take it for granted. There's so many podcasts. You know what's interesting? I do this at church when we do a welcome. I say there are so many churches that you can visit, but I do take True. it seriously that you have stopped right here at Intentional Conversations with Robin May. And friends, if you are a returning friend, I am so happy you are back, girl. And listen, y'all have been telling your friends about the podcast, and I am honored. So if you can do all the things, can you like? Can you subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube? If you're listening to this via your favorite podcast app, can you go ahead and leave a review and subscribe to the channel? It really helps. And the more subscriptions that we have, the more people that are sharing it, it takes it up the algorithm and the algorithm then lets other people know that they need to be tuned in. So do all the things for me, do all the yeah. things. We are also opening up the podcast for any sponsors. If if you are interested in sponsoring the entire podcast or an episode of the podcast, just hit us up in the DMs on Robin May Online on Instagram or shoot me an email at robin at robinmayonline.com. So again, I am so excited that you are here and we are about to get started. We have started a brand new series for this brand new season and the series is Dating Dilemmas navigating Ooh. the dating streets as a Christian woman. Yes. And we probably have one of the poster child <laughs> of Christian women. <laughs> How am I going to make you a poster child? Oh my Christian? God. Hey, wait a minute. How I'll take I it. You that title? <laughs> no, I'll this take it. Child. But you know what? I'm already getting to it. But I just love how real you are. You make being a woman of faith realistic and um, tangible, fun. Yeah, girl, wow. is your Thank brand you. is your brand fun? Is that part it, of what you want your personal brand to be? Uh, happy, 
happiness, Happy. happiness and joy. I, I never did consider fun, but I'm always, they're like, what is your brand theme or feel is happiness. And joy. You are doing that. Thank you. Like really, that's what it exudes. And you know, I probably need to do a whole series on your personal mm. brand because it doesn't have to mean that you have a platform. Well, first of all, everybody has a platform. They do. They do. Everybody has a yes. platform, but when you think about your brand, what do you want people to experience yes. when they encounter you? Yes. When people leave you, what do you want to have sprinkled yes. in their life? You're spring. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a word from the Lord. You're sprinkling something. So oh, baby. That's the truth. You're sprinkling something. something. And often when you're not intentional mm. about what you are sprinkling, mm. you're probably sprinkling something that is unhealthy or not um, received well. And yeah. so when I ask her what is her brand, that's what I meant. It doesn't have to be necessarily a business, but when people encounter you, yeah. how do you want people to leave? What is the story? This is not even what we're supposed to be talking about. I know, but, this but is what good. is the story <laughs> you want people to say about? about you they're gonna tell a story yes and what is it that you want them to say about you and so when i called her the uh, brand ambassador <laughs> for jesus <laughs> the brand ambassador single jesus, christian women right <laughs> if jesus had to select some brand ambassadors Ooh. in the word he called them disciples come but on in 2024, the brand ambassadors he select you <laughs> Would you be one of his brand ambassadors? Okay. That's good. Okay, that's just, that's not even what we were trying that's to do. That's good. Let me introduce <laughs> my girl, Latrice Pace. Latrice Pace is a legend all in herself, but her family is a legendary. And I want to say that again. You are legendary all within yourself, but your family is also legendary. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want to make that distinction is because she has made a path for herself it just so happens that her family has also laid right. out a path that she doesn't shy away from but she's yes. also created a path all in herself and so you. if you are new to latrice pace i'm going to give her an opportunity to tell us a little bit about herself but if you are a woman of faith if you've been a christian for at least two days <laughs> i'm just giving you two days you've heard of the pace family so latrice i want to give you the floor welcome 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 thank sis. you thank you robin it is so good to be here um yeah thank you tell me so first of all the and i have been friends for a long i was time. about to say that and i was like let me let her navigate yes. i was about to say that you know we're doing this together <laughs> but we've been friends for a long time just yes. recently she sent me a message a text about something this girl's always up to something yes. she sent me a picture of um any, uh, uh, a program i was doing many years yes. ago and we were like oh. been down Yes. We have been there. Yes. So tell the people a little bit about the Latrice Pace. Well, I am, I like to say I'm a creative being because a lot of times we go into these labels and we limit ourselves, but yes. I'm just a creative being as all of us uh, are. Um, eighth daughter, ninth child, born into a family of 12. Wait a minute. Eighth daughter, ninth, ninth child. child. So it was all girls. One, the first boy. First boy, okay. And then all girls. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I'm next to the baby on, okay. in that line. Um, I just, I love doing anything with my hands and thinking and anything creative. Mm -hmm. I, I just enjoy mm -hmm. doing it. Um, and that's it. That's, I so, think that sums me up. So let me ask you this real quick about that idea of we are, we're still, we're going to talk about dating. I know y'all like, get to the dating. <laughs> we're going to talk about dating. But right. before we do, you talked about being a creative being and sometimes we limit ourselves with labels. I'm just curious about this yeah. because I too am creative in a different kind of way, but mm -hmm. I have so many ideas. And as you can see, y'all can't see this, but around the room are all the post-it yes. notes for the different areas that are under under my umbrella. How do you navigate that though, being this phenomenal gospel singer, also a complete baker? Yeah. You had a whole bakery. Yeah. How do you navigate showing up in these different ways? Mm -hmm. Are you ever concerned about people being confused about what you bring? Um, at the beginning, I was I was told to stick with one thing and I tried yes. to I tried to uh, adapt that in my life, but it just wasn't working. Oh. It wasn't resonating because I'm like, I'm not one to just stick with one thing, Absolutely. but I'm not one to start one thing and leave it unfinished mm -hmm. and just hop around to a lot of things. Yes. So whatever is manifesting in that moment, mm -hmm. I give my full attention to mm -hmm. it. I make sure it's on its feet yes. and then I can go on to something else, but yes. with one thing that I'm learning to do even to this day is receiving and accepting help. 
So <laughs> the plight of most black women. Okay. It's the, I, wonder yes. if it's, I wonder if it's outside of just black women. Is it just women? I think it's, I think it's just women people, uh, women period, or people who have been disappointed. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you feel like I don't want to put what I'm trying to do in the hands of someone else who don't get it, it and they drop the ball. Yes. And I miss out on something because I was depending on someone else. That's something that, I that just, I can't whole. live with. So I did a live just recently and I, no, it wasn't a live. I think it might've just been a reel. And I talked about, are you controlling? Because a lot of times people are labeled as controlling. Mm -hmm. And I admitted that I sometimes can be controlling. And the reason why I wanted to do a reel on it, because I was telling women, if you can admit that you have a tendency to be controlling, mm -hmm. instead of judging it, be mm -hmm. curious about it. That's yes. the first thing about our life. Again, this conversation, is all over but part of our life yep. when we're navigating we want to make sure that we are navigating through a lens of curiosity mm. and not a lens of judgment that's why good. do i show up the way i show up that's good. so what i discovered is that a lot of times women tend to be controlling for one of two reasons either there's been a trauma in their life where their control was snatched from them yeah. and they've made a conscious or subconscious commitment yeah. that I'm not going to let that happen to ever me again. again. Yep. That's one reason. <laughs> the other reason is because they've been disappointed so often yes. that releasing control seems very difficult because yes. one thing I know is I'm not going to disappoint me. Yeah. So I'm not going to let you right. disappoint me. Absolutely. That's so exactly absolutely. It. Okay. So you have navigated being a creative being. Now you're learning to get the help, but also making sure you're not going from A to C when A hasn't been accomplished. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely not. Because even if it's just in, the, I'm not going to even make A known until I know it's able to function yes. and, and, and I'll be able to do the other things that I do really well. And it's a matter of planning and scheduling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When, when I know I'm going to be exhausted or overwhelmed or I got a show coming up, okay, I know how to go into my Tree C Treats website mm -hmm. to schedule orders or deliveries around the other things that I'm doing. I love so, that. So, yeah. And that takes... Um an intention. Absolutely. It takes an intention, intentional conversation. It takes Absolutely. Intention. Yes. If you want to live a life of purpose, you have to live a life of intention, Absolutely. not a life of passivity. Because yes. when you live a life of passivity, life is happening to you. You aren't making life happen. Absolutely. Baby, we're dropping some nuggets. Yes. For you, okay? <laughs> we're dropping some nuggets. Now, when I asked Latrice to share a little bit about herself, she did not give y'all the business what? okay because <laughs> latrice why am i calling you legendary okay your family your family is known for what singing Sing, yes. singing in the gospel industry uh and from that um i i went on the road with my sister sean as her personal assistant and from that it launched my um uh, ability or i i didn't even know i had the ability to act so really? being on the road with Sean put me on that acting path and I ended up wow. doing theatrical show after after year after year just from association and relationships. And well, um well, that's a whole word. Yeah. So two things. Number one, you just went to support your sister as her assistant. Yes. And in your serving in that capacity, a yes. whole nother door opened up. For Absolutely. You. So some of you are wanting some open doors. You may need to start serving and supporting someone. Absolutely. And watch those doors open. And then secondly, through association and connection, yes. also you began to see another realm for your life. Did, yes. did you even know you were interested in that? I didn't know. The, the, I was sitting in the audience, you know, just waiting to her say she needed something or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the director, David Talbert, many people know him from Jingle Jangle. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. He was like, hey, can, he asked Sean, can your sister act? We need somebody to fill this role. And she was like, of course, it's my sister. And from there on, I w did a lot of his plays. I went with her to do Tyler Perry's. Uh, I know wow. I've been changed, ending up being her understudy. And from then on, David called me every year. Tyler called me every year. And uh, why is that giving me chills? There's something <laughs> about that is giving me chills. It's okay. Favor. So it's, it's yeah, favor. God. So legendary, the legendary Pace sisters. People can't just say the Pace sisters. <laughs> it's legendary. We, we have to say the legendary Pace sisters. It almost feels disrespectful if I see somebody say the Pace sisters. I want to be in the comments somehow. The legendary. The legendary. <laughs> the legendary. Da -da. Exactly. And so, but you're so humble with that. Um, you have your own album. Yes, correct? I do. How I do, do people connect with your album before we go into this dating part? You can go to latricepace.com and it'll take you to everything Latrice Pace or wherever you listen to your music. Just put in my name and it'll come up. 
wherever you listen to your music, yeah. baby. All right, so let's dive into it. Okay, so I want to ask you some of these questions as we start talking about navigating dating. If you haven't already, make sure you go back and listen to episode one of this mm -hmm. season where I kind of laid out my perspective on it, um, on dating. And I'm very careful when I talk about dating, and I shared this with you, Latrice, yeah. I'm very careful about it. And we're going to get into this in a minute because I am a married woman at the point of this episode airing. We will be this close to our 22nd wow. wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. And we have been together 30 years. Now, if you calculate back, I am 49 years old. That means I've been with that man since he was 17 and I was 18. Wow. So I have to be careful when I'm talking about dating because as my girlfriends have told me, you ain't been in these dating streets, yes. Robin. Yes. You, <laughs> you have not been in these dating right. streets, right? And I think, and we're going to get into this, I think women, married women, have to be careful about it. But as we start to talk about it, I want to continue to lay out a little bit about your upbringing because I believe that has directly influenced oh, absolutely. dating for you. And so what was was your family's or your um what were you taught or allowed maybe that's a yeah. better word when it was time to start dating whatever that time is mm -hmm. i guess my daughter is 16 she's gonna be so mad because she ooh, <laughs> ryan I, i'm sorry but my daughter is 16 and she actually has a whole boyfriend oh wow yeah a whole boyfriend so at what age were you allowed to date or were you allowed to date i was not allowed to date until i graduated from high school okay so everybody rewind yeah. So if you came home and said, I have a crush, what would have happened? Oh, I, I wouldn't have, I would not have said that because really? I remember distinctly one morning and it, it wasn't child abuse, y'all. <laughs> She's gone on to be with the Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. But um, mother would tell us boys and books don't mix. And mm. I remember getting a whooping just as a reminder. Oh, child, these folks want to trip about somebody getting a whooping. Yeah. <laughs> we get, I got whoopings, but you got a whooping because. As a reminder mind. that wow. boys and books don't mix. So don't even think about coming to me telling me you got a crush on anybody. Now, you had older siblings. Was, was the rules the same for them? It was when the they same. Were age? Yep. It was the same. So did okay. So your mama said you couldn't have a boyfriend, but did you have a boyfriend? I did not. You obeyed. I obeyed. Yeah, I didn't want a whooping. <laughs> <laughs> you obeyed. Yeah, I love it. I mean, that's a good thing. Okay, yeah. but were you were you crushing on somebody? There was this guy that I did have a crush on, and literally the teacher. Had, you know when the teacher would leave and they would leave you in charge? Yeah, yeah. She had left. I was always left in charge. Were Me left? too. <laughs> okay, keep going. And there was this guy named Carl. He was cute, little chubby, light skinned guy. Where's Carl? I don't hey, know. Going. Where are you, Carl? I, call, I don't know. Okay, go ahead. And Carl, he had done something, and I was like, I put his name down, and he came over to my desk, and he was like, "Did you put my name down?" And he kissed me. And then I was like, oh my God, what do I do with that? Oh, we're getting married. <laughs> we are getting married. We're officially getting married. Yes, Carl. yes. Oh my God. But I cried. I ended up crying because I didn't know what that meant. And I was like, why did he do that? And So wait, so you had these older siblings and while your mother was very strict, would you have felt free to talk to them about it? Absolutely not. No. I didn't. I did. You know what? Sean was the only one that we we kept secrets. Okay. Because we were li at night we would listen to jazz, jazz music under that, the covers. And was that out of control? It no. Or, oh yeah, it was oh yeah, it was it was forbidden. See this let's see, this is the yeah. reason why. Okay, <laughs> because listen, I want y'all to see this. When I'm asking her these questions as we talk about dating, yeah. Your childhood, whether you are 20 or 50 or 60, shaped how you navigated life. Listen, yeah. all of us are trying to do one of two things, and we're trying to do it, Latrice, on a multitude of levels. Yeah. We are either trying to repeat what we saw growing up, mm. or we're trying to get as far away from Ooh. what we saw growing up. And Girl. often we're doing that in a multitude of ways, wow. right? So when it comes to me as a wife, I could be trying to repeat or reject. When it comes to me as a mother, I might be trying to repeat or reject. So if I use myself as an example, there are some 
dynamics of how my mother showed up as a wife that I don't want to show up that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get as far away from that. Yes. But there's some things she did as a mother that yes. I'm trying to repeat. So when I say it shows up in a multitude of different ways, that's what I mean. Yes. And so if you've never taken time to slow your life down long enough to pay attention to why you do what you do, how your core beliefs are shaped, you won't understand the patterns that are showing up in your life. Yes. And so even if you are 50 years old and you're wondering why is she talking about what happened when she was a child because at 50 you're either trying to repeat or yeah. trying to get as far away from if you haven't done the work mm. to understand why what you do doing. what you yep. do right <laughs> and so uh. when it came time because i'm going to get into the fact that you um we're married. We're yes. going to get into that. I'm going to ask you something about that. But that's why I'm asking her these questions. Mm -hmm. And so playing jazz <laughs> under the cover. <laughs> At night while everybody is asleep. It yes. was a whole thing. It was. It was a whole thing. Okay. So then you get out of high school. Did you immediately like, okay, now is my time, baby. I did it. I, ended, did it. I was on the road. I started developing a career. What I didn't even know was going to be my career. Mm -hmm. um, so I just got focused on that. I probably didn't date until 27, 26 or 27. Wow. Yeah. It was like my mid-20s. 26 yeah. or 27. That's interesting, Latrice, because, yeah. see, I had a boyfriend when I was in in uh, kindergarten. My first oh, my wow. first, my first boyfriend <laughs> was kindergarten, baby. But, so that that's you're real grown by the time you're yeah. 26 or 27. Yeah. You know, your brain fully develops by, they say, by the time you're 25. Actually, it was around, I would say 23. Okay. Because I got married at 27. Okay. But I did start dating around 23. Did you start dating the man you ended up marrying? I did not. So you dated somebody else. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you first started dating, what was that like for you? Do you remember? It was fun. Okay. It was really fun. Um, And it was a friend. Mm -hmm. So it just felt really natural. It, I didn't feel like I had to put on or you, we were just, we just continued being friends. Okay. We just kissed every now and then. Every once in a while. Right. Got, got a little sugar. At the choir rehearsal. <laughs> got a little sugar every once in a while. Right. Okay, so then you right. dated him. That yeah. kind of fizzled? Is that what happened? It did. It okay. did. I think he, he, uh, he became aware of his sexuality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was, we, we still remained friends, but it was like, okay, cool. So. Yeah. So you weren't heartbroken? I was a little, but I I was, I think I was more prideful that I wasn't going to allow that to show mm -hmm. because you chose someone else over me yes. and that wasn't even my same gender. gender. Yeah. And you yeah. know what's so interesting? I have a I have a client right now that I am so unbelievably impressed with and it made me think of what you just said because somehow even... I would almost say better than me, she can experience a rejection, regardless of what it is, mm -hmm. um, relational in her career. And she does not personalize it as a reflection on her. Wow. She can just see it as that just wasn't for me. And yeah. I think a lot of times when you said that, mm -hmm. We see rejection as a reflection of us. Absolutely. And it really rarely has anything, anything to, to do, do with, with us. us. So yeah. you were you were like, I, what I'm not going to do is let you see me sweat. Yeah. That you've become aware. And I love how you said aware of his sexuality. And yeah. so that was that. So then tell me about transitioning into marriage. Okay. So transitioning into marriage was, I thought was going to be easy. Um, because I thought I was equipped and ready and we were friends as mm -hmm. well. I was, I'm really big on friendships. Yeah. Even after things have fizzled, let's still be friends. Okay. Um, but when situations came up that I couldn't, I couldn't process, I couldn't handle, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't navigate. I was like, okay, this is a whole different ball game yeah. and yeah. I'm not prepared to handle this. So let me ask you this. Do you believe that your upbringing influence oh. your decision to marry this particular person absolutely because i that. i only dated people in the church world mm -hmm. or the church arena first of all mm -hmm. um because it was the unequally yoked thing first yeah. and then it was like oh if he ain't saved don't even give him a time of day don't even look at him yeah so mm -hmm. that's why i didn't date people that was that i traveled with or in plays because mm -hmm. i already knew that mm -hmm. that was you know you got a girlfriend in every city. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he was a preacher. So mm -hmm. it was like in the church, preacher. Oh, it's a, I got this. Mm -hmm. All I have to do to be a good wife is, you know, pray and cook his meals. I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't groomed on 
how to please them in the bed. I, I, I was never aware of my own sexuality. Wow. Uh, never even taught about how things, honestly, growing up, and this is so crazy, the, the only preparation you really got was the negligees at your bridal shower Girl. and Vaseline. Okay, let me, where am I going to pass out? Because I want to pass out right yeah. now. This is why I love her. That's, the realness of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so wait a minute. First of all, she said Vaseline. If y'all don't understand why she said Vaseline, DM me, okay? Yeah. DM me. <laughs> but this is what I always tell my premarital couples. I tell them, you packed your suitcase for the honeymoon. Yeah. And you put your negligees in there, but you also had your issues in there. Yes. Those issues were packed in that suitcase as well. Yeah. I don't know what the men packed for a honeymoon, but <laughs> their boxes, I guess, but their issues are in there right. as well. So both of y'all can. Now, I, you know, I am um, was friends with him as well, but I don't know the answer to this. Yeah. Do you believe he too was not prepared for marriage? Um, I, oh, was he? I can't answer that. Mm. Um, because I can only reflect on you. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he was a great, it not was like he's dead or gone. He's a great man. Mm -hmm. um, he did all the things that made me say, you know what? I can do life with you. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just think I wasn't, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take it. It's mm. me. Well, and yeah, you know I think only he can answer that. I don't that's know. Fair. I think that's fair. And I think what's interesting about what you're saying, y'all listen to this. And I think you would probably say that to this day. You can be, a, two people can be good people. Yeah. They can love God. Yes. And that doesn't necessarily mean that an I do is going to work. Yes. Would you say that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So how did you as, go ahead, you're about I to say can, something. Only, the only thing I, I, can, I can glean from experiences where um, maybe men in general, or all of us in general, don't understand uh, the importance of being intentional with our outside relationships mm. and honoring our spouse without feeling like they're being controlling when they say, I'm not comfortable with this. I love that. Yes. I, so if, if you would, for me, just, you know, chill out on yeah, that. Chill yeah. out on that until I'm comfortable with it because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm seeing something you can't see. Mm. So in other words, if you were to get married tomorrow, you would want a spouse that would hear your heart yes. and trust your heart. Trust, that's it. Hear me and trust me and not blame it on an insecurity that's mm -hmm. not there, mm -hmm. but I'm really feeling something and I'm seeing something that I think you, you're, you're not seeing. So I think, and I already know you, and I know that you are intentional in your processing, but just in case, you know you have to have that listed as one of the criteria for you. Yes. A man that will hear your heart. Yes. And not just hear your heart, listen to your heart. Yes. Like, receive that. And you know, even if, even if it was an insecurity, one of the things that I coach my couples on, if one of us has a problem, it becomes our, our problem. problem. Yes. And so even if, because when you get married, we still have issues. Yes. And so if this is a particular issue that your partner has, you don't have to be controlled by it, yes. but you would cover it and honor it as that person heals with that issue or yes. deals with that issue. I'll tell a quick story. When, um, my husband and I, like I said, we've been married now coming up on 22 years. Yeah. Well, many, many years ago, before we started pastoring TFC, you know he was a politician. Yes. And he became the CEO of our county. Mm -hmm. The day he became a CEO, the CEO, yeah. we're sitting in his office that day, his brand new office. This was um, unexpected. Like wow. he was appointed by the governor, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I'm sitting in his office and I'm just paranoid and anxious about this new role. And I turn to him and I say, office full of people, pray, pray for him, office full of people. And I say to him, now, I don't know who's going to get those kids off the bus. I, you, make sure you're going to get those kids off the bus tomorrow. Because that was his responsibility. Right. He got the kids off the bus. Oh, wow. Now, this man is now the CEO. And the only thing I can say to him, you need to make sure you get them kids off the bus. Let me tell you why. Because I had a world view that powerful mm. men neglected their families. Wow. That was an undercurrent of my belief system. I'm saying this consciously now, yes. reflecting, but I had an undercurrent that powerful men in powerful positions put their family on the back burner. Yes. And because I'm a type A kind of woman, I'm uh -huh. like, what ain't happening, <laughs> right, yes. is you doing that? So watch this though. 
that was my stuff. That my husband yeah. hadn't done anything to make me think that he had been a politician for six years up until that point. Yes. He had done nothing to make me think that. But some of my experiences, my issues yes. led me to have that belief. So what did he do? He covered me, made sure that our girls were taken care of, made sure that he prioritized our family as I began to heal in that yes. area. So that's what we mean when you think about what you want. And, and again, this podcast is geared toward Christian women. Is that important to you? Mm-hmm. Do you want him to hear your heart? I think you said something so key as you began to heal in that area, because a lot of times I think most women would be, oh, I just told him what it was going to be without exactly. realizing where did that come from? This is this is a problem. This is an issue. Yes. This is something I need to deal with. Opposed yes. to I just told him what it's going to be. I just be. gave it to him. No, no because I not. recognize... And here's the deal. Even if he had shown me something, how I presented it would have needed to be in a different way. Absolutely. And so, yeah, so I love that. So you know that that's important to you. Okay. So how did you, Latrice, Mm -hmm. as this ambassador for Jesus that I done made (laughs) you, right? how many years ago was that when you married? Oh, about 15, maybe, maybe going on 18. That's crazy. Yeah, I oh 2007. So what is Girl, that? Oh I don't know. I'm, I'm not good on math like that. And I was a math major child. Yeah, but almost 16, 17 years yeah. ago. Girl. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, 17 years ago, divorce was not as con- is that a fair statement to say it wasn't as common in church world. That's that true. was still frowned upon. Absolutely. How did you navigate? the divorce was did you feel shame like what did you feel from that i kept it to myself Mm. i it was first of all when we had issues i kept it to myself Mm. because i know when you share things with family and friends they aren't as forgiving as you especially when you have a whole like you you don't just have a family okay we call this a tribe yes (laughs) yeah yes you kept it you kept it to yeah i didn't let them know anything that i was dealing with because if given the chance that we were to reconcile Mm. and stay together, I didn't want him dealing with trying to prove himself Mm -hmm. to me and them. Well, it's wise. Yeah. So it was wise that you didn't divulge all of that to the family, but you need a safe space to talk about what you're going through. But the family and always is not just her family, family. Cause see, my mother still can be like, cause my husband called, you remember, you may not know this. Lee called off the wedding. (laughs) No, I did not know. Yes, Lee proposed and then called off the wedding. Oh, wow. And we've been married 22 years. I promise you, 10 years into the marriage, my mom was like, be careful. Girl. Yes. Be careful. Yeah. Make sure. So it was yes. wise, but not so much to keep it to yourself, not to yeah. have a safe space. Okay. So you didn't tell anybody. So when it was time to get a divorce, what? I It was me realizing he is never coming back because- wow. Oh, I'm good. Um, my reason for divorcing was abandonment. Mm. Um, he left and never came back. And, and once you realize, once I realized this is this is what it is, I was like, okay, let me just make this decision because what I'm not gonna do <laughs> exactly. is exactly. um hold off, uh, put my life on hold, just waiting for him to find his way back home. Mm-hmm. And to his defense years after us talking about that he felt like he had done so much that mm. he couldn't find his way back home yeah i love the grace that you're you're giving with that and and also again this was 17 years ago yeah. none of us are the same people we're not we shouldn't be right the same people we were 17 years ago so yeah. you have some grace for that absolutely so how did your family receive that news it was just that i made this decision they didn't have to know the complete things of why at that moment, eventually I shared Mm -hmm. some things, but uh, well, some things got out because there were people when I'm on the road, like, Hey, is Tracy still married? Mm -hmm. Because I saw something that I'm like, no, that's not Latrice. Mm -hmm. And I Mm -hmm. think they're still married. So people knew, but they just didn't know from me. Okay. Um, so, um, what was that question again? I said, how did mm-hmm. you begin to move? Like, yeah. once you, once the divorce was found, you showed your family, you said it just started to kind of get it out. Yeah. What was the path of healing for you Yeah. from that? Uh, work. I ended up, I was still touring. Mm. Um, and even while being married, because some people thought, they asked, was your traveling, did that interfere? And I was intentional with, hey, whenever, 
you want to come out, come mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. I'm making the money. Mm -hmm. So just say when you when your schedule allows with work. Or I even said, hey, I want to see you this weekend. Yeah. Or can you come to this city? So we were very intentional with making sure we connected, even though I was touring. Mm -hmm. um, but touring helped me heal, heal okay. and move on because it was like, hey, let's just let's get busy doing what I do. And um, even when that came to an end, I was intentional with going to counseling to make sure I didn't just sweep it under the carpet or yeah. whatever. So, so that's yeah. why I was going to. OK, so you did have space to kind of talk it out, process it and yes. deal with it. Did you ever go through the phase of I ain't doing that again? I ain't getting married. Or oh, absolutely. Like you did. Oh, absolutely. I thought you were going to say absolutely not. Yeah. I Not that I didn't believe in love again. It's just that going back to and I can realize now why I did it because of something you said that when I got the whooping as a reminder that boys and books didn't Ooh. mix because my mother didn't want us dividing the energy of school mm -hmm. and love. Mm. I'm I'm never I'm. I'm, not, I'm one that I'm going to focus on one thing. You just said and that. Since, about, yes. And since I'm focusing on my career and traveling and whatever, I don't have time for love mm. because mm -hmm. I need to make sure this is successful. Now, Latrice, I'm, we're going on a journey, but I'm going to fast forward real quick. Mm -hmm. Is that your stance now? Um, after coming out of a serious relationship, it is my stance now. Because I was dating someone that I really, I thought, Whoa, this is it. I I can I can do this with him again. Mm. Um Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, let's go back. So you get out of the, the your your divorce and you're touring and you're eventually going to therapy. How quickly did you start or did you? Did you ever go through a phase where you're just dating? So when we talk about dating, let's talk about dating first. When I'm thinking dating, there are two different thoughts about that mm -hmm. dating just multiple people and when we say dating multiple people that doesn't mean you're being intimate with multiple people but just going on dates like i'll go coffee with you and i'll go to dinner with you that's one date or dating can be you and i one person that that's who i'm dating mm -hmm. which lane do you tend to find yourself in um i would say what i'm 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 all in i don't if I'm dating, I'm dating you. Even if we say we're exclusive or not, it's just mm -hmm. I'm not trying to. You don't date multiple people. Yeah, at one, one of time. my girlfriends says that. And she said it's too distracting. She's yeah. like, I just get too distracted dating multiple. So you're kind of the I'm dating you and I'm sticking with you. Yeah, okay. and let's see what this is. And if this don't work, okay, then I'll move on to someone else because it's just too much. Like mm -hmm. it's too distracting. It's too now, much. do you ever? Okay, do you with that? I'm asking the questions y'all want to know with that. <laughs> Dating one person, if you're not exclusive, first of all, my question is, are you okay with that person dating other people, even if you're not? Yeah, because we haven't labeled or had that conversation with, you know what, let's be exclusive. Okay. Yeah. So then how do you, or are you able to protect in those cases, your heart from getting too wrapped up? Absolutely not. I love I'm just, it. Yeah. You can't do it. No. Even, even with me being exclusive, there is an underlying thing that you want him to say, okay, well, I'll be exclusive too. Exactly. Because if you find exactly. out, if I find out, okay, you went on a date with somebody else. Well, we didn't say it, but. Exactly. You feel <laughs> some kind of way. I'm feeling some, some kind, kind of way. way. Absolutely. Yeah. I think. Um, because if, that happened. Tell me. Yeah, I was, Um, I didn't, after my divorce, I think I didn't date for like 15 years. I was. You know, every once in a while I got to pass out. I'm yeah. passing out. Yeah. If, so when you talk about you got busy working, Latrice, yeah. you mean I got busy. Wait a minute. Was that intentional? Like it, it was intentional, but it's also I didn't get approached. People would think, oh, my God, I know you got them coming out the woodworks, but I didn't get approached like that. And I remember, I don't know if there's a rating to this, but I remember once a guy uh, took me out and he was like, so how long have you been divorced? I was like 15 years, 10 years, at, maybe at that time. And he was like, Am I the first person you've dated since? He was like, yeah. He was like, oh, blank. No, I ain't trying to compete with no batteries. All right, I got to go. He's and he to... left. He and left. I didn't date again? Did not date again. I can I can appreciate said, the honesty, but. I am not trying to compete with no batteries. See, this is the reason why I ain't been in these dating streets. I don't know what's going on. It's horrible out here. I don't know. Because you on. assumed that, that we were going to be sexually active if we're dating. Yeah. 
I shouldn't be this speechless. Homeboy said I ain't trying to. And then he was yeah, serious. He was serious was... and he left. It wasn't rude, but it was just like, no, nah, I don't want to deal with that. And I appreciate it. But well, yeah. I appreciate the honesty too. Don't waste my time. Yeah. But okay, so 15 <laughs> years is a long time. And so you said people were not approaching you. Do you think, do you, do you deal with as a single woman, you are a single woman, been married one time, no children. No children. Do you believe that men, or do you experience men being intimidated by you? I don't think so because I'm very approachable. Um, I'm always the first one to speak when I enter a room. Um, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't know why, but I don't think so. But now, it would have to take, it would take them that have encountered me to, to, to voice that. that. Yeah. But I don't think so. But I, do you have male friends? I think you should ask them. Have you ever asked I your male ask friends? Them. If, if Now, when I That's ask that question. question, I don't think that, because we're about to talk about this in a minute, I don't think that this is a matter of Latrice doing anything wrong or any mm -hmm. single woman doing anything wrong right. when I ask that question. But feelings are not right or wrong. They just are. And so when I'm asking, are do men feel intimidated? I'm just curious if your single male friends would tell you, yeah, now I also would say if they are intimidated and intimidated so much that they're not willing to approach, mm -hmm. that gives you the information you need gotcha. because you don't want a man that can't push past right. that emotion yeah. and approach you. Okay, so you were single. Oh, oh, that's what I was about to ask you. Mm -hmm. Over the course of that time from your divorce to now, you've gone through a major transformation, like even physically. Yeah. You've always been gorgeous and as Thank gorgeous you. as you are now, but you made a lot of intention to the point where you were one of the women that motivated me to start being intentional about my health, wow. the way you eat, working out. So tell me about that commitment, how that happened for you. Um, Going through the divorce, I was literally like every day waking up in the looking in the mirror and crying and not liking what I saw mm -hmm. and blaming myself for this is why he's not coming home. Mm. So, um, but I knew that something inside didn't feel right about feeling that way about myself. Mm. I didn't know what it was, but I oh, was like, know, you know, it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> saying, saying you are my masterpiece. Baby. Right. What you not gonna do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so God said, you know what? Let's do something about it. He said, get a piece of paper and create two columns. And the first column, label it things that are in Latrice's power to change. Mm. The second column, he was like things that are in God's power to change. And there were things I was doing in, in full transparency. Like I didn't like my skin. I was breaking out. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up doing the proactive thing every year. You can go to the mall. You know, they had the little machine. Sis did proactive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I started a, a, a skincare regimen. Um, I didn't like my weight, so I started walking and gradually changing my eating habits one thing at a time until I mastered one thing and then I added something else. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like that I always had NSFs, so mm -hmm. I start being responsible with, okay, if I don't have it, I'm not going to swipe this card. Mm -hmm. um, it was just Some of y'all don't know what NSF is. <laughs> uh, sufficient funds. See, some of y'all have never even experienced that. God bless you. God bless that's you. That's what it stands for. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, this bank is taking $30 every time mm -hmm. I'm not having integrity. So mm -hmm. I want to be, I want to have integrity with my finances. So I started balancing and, you know, putting off what I didn't, what I couldn't afford or whatever. So it was things like that. And then I started blaming my family. I, if I didn't have so many people in my family, my parents could do this for me. And God was like, I, you can't change that. Mm. So give that to me. And I put that in, my, in that column. Mm -hmm. And what he did was change how I looked at my mm. family and and how I saw the you know um what I felt like I didn't inherit or could have mm -hmm. inherited mm -hmm. he changed those things so that's how I started mm -hmm. changing my physicality because then, it was then, in my power to change now as you change that is that how this vibrancy yeah girl, that's another brand word for you I like that vibrancy is that how that vibrancy became yeah. so apparent I started putting in the work working on myself, dealing mm -hmm. with myself, changing the things that I didn't like. And it changed my outlook. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it changed my, my, my temperament. It changed mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you were going through this time, 15 years. So then you end up, is that, was that the next serious relation? Did you have a serious relationship? I started, me? honestly, I, during that time, I, I literally just said, you know what, let's just play. Mm. 
<laughs> See, I think, okay, do you feel like every, okay, being single in your 20s is different than being single in your 40s yes. or being single in your 50s. And I think sometimes the Christian, I want to be careful because this is for Christian women. And so God's word, let me be very clear. God's word stands the test of time. Yes. We don't get to change the word. We don't get to say that that only applies to me. Yeah. If you, We don't play those games over right. here. But <laughs> what I am saying is what dating looks like in your 20s is different than what it looks like in your very 40s. Different. And I think when you are in your late 30s, 40s and beyond yes. and you're not married you need to have some time where you just kind of enjoying life. So that is, what does that look like? What that, does that was look exactly like? what I did in my forties. I was like, let's play. And I started, I was dating this guy who was a, a touring musician and we just, we just had fun. We just enjoyed one another's company. And you knew it wasn't going to be anything. I knew, I knew it, but yet and still I was hoping, you know what? This gonna really he's gonna fall for it. He's gonna this we gonna get serious at some point, but let's just have fun playing. But he's gonna get serious at some point. See, I love that realness because I think that there's a part of our if we wanna be married and we meet somebody that we enjoy their company, yeah. I think it's unrealistic to say you're not even considering that, that there's nowhere on your mind that he's yeah. gonna, so you did have it out there floating. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. You we always feel like let them do what they're gonna do, but it's something about me that's going to change them. I already know, sis. I know you are like Robin. No, you are not jumping in at this point. But yes, girl, this interview is two parts and this is just part one. But don't you love how real Latrice is? I loved it when she said, you know what? I thought it was going to be something about me that was going to change him. Girl, you know, almost all of us have been there before. But again, this was just part one. There is so much more coming in part two. Latrice is going to talk about her stance on Christian women dating non-believers. She's going to talk about why she chose to date someone older at one point on her journey. She tells us why she decided she wouldn't be a secret no more when she was dating somebody. She's going to let us know how one particular guy she was dating, she began to realize, wait a minute, he's entertaining some other friends. And she is going to share with us why she just may be okay with being single. Girl, there is so much more to come. If you aren't already, make sure you are following Latrice on Instagram, theatrical pace. Go ahead and follow me at Robin May online and DM both of us your greatest takeaway. Part two is coming next week. So go ahead, tell your friends they don't want to miss this episode, any episodes before this one and any more to come. We are going there, girl. Dating dilemmas. I'll see you next week. Well, girl, that's it for this episode. I already know you have at least one aha, one takeaway that's going to help you continue to live intentionally, fully engaged. But before you go, girl, I have another opportunity for you to take your investment into you to the next level. Listen, you and I both know that there are some patterns that you have been dealing with for a long time. You and I both know that there's just something that you can't seem to identify that's keeping you from getting to the next level. Or maybe for you, girl, maybe this one is for you. Maybe things are good, but you just know they could be better, but you just don't quite know what the missing piece is. Well, after some prayerful consideration, I decided to offer to all of you what I'm calling bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women. Listen, girl, one of the things I hear all the time is, Robin, I just don't have the time. I truly want to get a PhD in me, but when in the world do I have the time? Well, I have you in mind with bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women. Listen, girl, this is your no excuse path to identifying what you need to understand so that you can see, experience, and curate the life you love. Bite-sized breakthroughs is your opportunity to discover what's necessary to push past what's stopping you one aha at a time. This is a low investment, no risk opportunity for you. So stop what you're doing right now. Head on over to robinmayonline.com slash breakthrough. robinmayonline.com slash breakthrough. This one is for you.